One day, I was traveling to work on the Hollywood freeway, and the thought came to me, I, I, I was trying so hard to say, how can we beat, what can we do next to make sure that we can beat the competition? And whammo, out of nowhere, the thought came, the answer, of course, is to put, build a mobile unit in a helicopter so we can do breaking news stories and get over the traffic, get there in a hurry, uh, and, and probably beat the competition. And that's where it started. I, 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 the idea excited me when I thought about it. And when I got to, into my office at KTLA, I immediately sat down and I wrote down questions that were, had to be answered before I could even think about mentioning the project, let alone whether it could be approved or not. But uh, the first place was uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what, what kind of a helicopter could do this. I mean, we need to have something that one that would be uh, able to carry the weight uh, to be able to handle a remote in those days would take equipment that would weigh up to 2,000 pounds. I mean, transistors were, were, were not a reality at that time. Everything was tubes and there was heavy power supplies. And so it all added up and weight to 2,000 pounds. So my thought was how in the world can we boil down the equipment to 2,000 down to over to 400 feet because I, uh, 400 pounds, and I knew that's the kind of the area that we'd have to get to. So uh, I didn't really know that number at that time. I, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I knew that it would have to go down considerably. So, so that we had to figure out what was available and what would be a reasonable cost to, to lease or buy uh, so that the station perhaps would be, uh, I, I knew that someday they were gonna have to know about the project and. Hopefully they would approve it. I, I was just dreaming at this point uh, with high hopes. And so, uh, I, uh, so I knew that that had to be researched. And uh, then I had to uh, know things like how much weight could, they, could the helicopter carry? Uh, uh, how, much, how long can a copter stay in the air before refueling? Uh, uh, what were the FAA, the, the regulatory body for, for aircraft, uh, uh, what did they have to, uh, what did, were their requirements for helicopters covering news events? How high, you know, were you limited? You, how, did you have to stay up 2,000 feet or 1,000 feet or could you go down to 500 feet, so on? Could you land, you know, and so forth? These are all questions that, that had to be answered. Uh, the next thing was how in the world could we get a picture from the mobile unit flying around anywhere in a 50 mile radius in Los Angeles and get a picture and sound steady so it could reach the studio eventually and be broadcast to the public. I mean, that would have to be done. I knew that it had to be done. So I had to do a propagation analysis. So I knew that I'd have to get a lot of topographical maps and things of that nature and study it and make some calculations to see where the, signal, the signals could be carried with a transmitter and an antenna in the copter that was flying around at different attitudes and so on uh, in different locations and have that transmit. I figured that, that what we would have to do is to transmit to Mount Wilson and use that as a receiving point, then transmit that back down to, to the studios in Hollywood uh, and then back ultimately to the transmitter and then out to the public. And uh, so, but the main job was getting it to Mount Wilson. And so, uh, once uh, that had to be done, uh, the, the trick was uh, to how to do it. I mean, what kind of an antenna would you use to that would make this possible? There were you know different options there to use, and and and, uh, and the other one was uh, what kind of of a positioning system would you use to keep the antennas at both locations pointing at one another? I mean, you know, move away and you have no signal. So. Uh, uh, and I boiled down really to three different uh, types of systems. And the first one that came to mind was a brute force system where we would take, a, we use a lot of power in the microwave at the, at the transmitter in the copter and then use an omnidirectional antenna and be able to hopefully get a signal, which I didn't know because I hadn't done the mathematics on it, uh, to, 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 to when we're flying around places in Los Angeles keeping a steady signal. Uh, that uh, was ruled out 
because the first place we didn't have any transmitters, microwave transmitters, at uh, we were going to use a, a two gigahertz or two thousand megahertz uh, transmitter, which we had license for uh, and used on remotes. Would use that in the copter, but to use to get the power that would be required to get a signal, a noise-free signal to the trans to the uh, transmitter building on Mount Wilson as a receiving location, uh, it was just impractical. Uh, and it would take too long to get that developed. So we ruled that out. And then the next alternate was to use a positioning system, an automatic positioning system, where a servo mechanism, where both antennas would seek each other and point at each other and so on. And uh, that turned out to be, uh, at that time, uh, too lengthy a project. We had to, we, we just didn't have the time. We wouldn't have the time to do that. I knew that we'd have to get on the air within four to six months or, or somebody was going to maybe come up with an idea and so on. They weren't, but, we, but it was a paranoid thought, you know. And uh, so uh, that, uh, that was ruled out, that system. And then uh, all of a sudden I thought of the, uh, as an alternate compromise system, and that was to use a system that was a combination, a uh, directive system and non-directive. And I remember, you know, in, in uh, understanding transmitters, which I was responsible for our main transmitter too on Mount Wilson, that the helical antenna, which is a spiral type of antenna uh, and big, you know, maybe, maybe eight feet tall and, you know, weighs a couple hundred pounds and things like that, was a helical antenna and that would be used on main transmitters. And I thought, well, an antenna like that uh, might be able to be uh, de redesigned down to, uh, to something we could use and that would be small and it would have, uh, looking down on it, if you look down, the horizontal would be omnidirectional. But looking at a side view of the antenna, it would be it would sending out information six degrees above the horizon and six degrees below the horizon all the way around. And it turned out by calculation that that would give a, a, six, a 12 dB uh, I'm sorry, it would give a 12 degree angle all the way around. And by so doing, it would give an antenna gain of nine decibels. And that would, that would uh, mean that the picture was basically doubles for every three dB. So it would be double and double is four and four times four uh, times two is eight. So it'd be, it would then be eight times the power uh, and gain through the antenna, which we needed in order to help the signal arrive at the receiving location uh, noise-free, or basically noise-free. One thing I w would like to say is about this uh, antenna that proved to be the way to go, this compromise helical antenna, was actually a center-fed, what they call center-fed helical. In other words, the, the helical antenna goes down like this. If it's end, it can either be end-fed at one end, you put the energy in, and then it radiates out, in a pattern uh, such as I just described, uh, or you can use a center fed. And there's reasons for doing it, and it's technical, and I won't get into it now, but we ended up with the, with the center fed version of that, as opposed to the end fed that's used on tele big television towers for, for uh, stations, transmitters, and so on. Uh, but uh, there, in spite of the fact that we did very well with that, and we even got very large distances away, you know, uh, from Mount Wilson with the signal. Uh, we had an effect called uh, multipath, M-U-L-T-I hyphen P-A-T-H. And uh, that's a, 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 a condition you get when signals uh, reflect off of objects, like the ground. When it, when, in other words, when you transmit from a point, and you receive it at a point, the signal going out in different directions, then you might get a piece of the signal reflecting off a building or a mountain up here or a tree or something here. And, and they come back and they, and they bounce again and come back. And, and so you're getting images that, that reach the receiving point that have gone not the direct path necessarily. They may have taken a route by being bounced off something here, bounce back and then and then ricocheted back to eventually to the receiving point. And that causes an effect uh, that's referred to as uh, 
uh, rubber banding or uh, or uh, just plain uh, ply. We used to call it plywood for a, just a good old phrase we use. And and you can see those in some of the older pictures uh, where the picture begins to the edges start to vibrate and so on. And and that was good old Moldapath. And and of course later on uh, we made improvements to eliminate that and we had signals that just were, were a lot better, stronger, and, and avoid of that particular problem.